Jared Poland fro knows photo.com and we have another people mover video uh well raw file edit of the week this is number 23 and coming up after my edit we have another well actually we have a special guest who's doing a raw edit this week with me uh so i saw this photo in the in the email and i was like yeah, we could really do something like this. Last week's was a lot of fun. It was that train, and so many people edited that, and there were some awesome, amazing uh, edits that, we, that really got submitted. So I was really happy with that. And and I saw this one, and I wanted to do it last week also, but obviously we spread it out. It's uh, I don't think it's in the U.S., and I say that because I come over here and I see these signs over here, not in English. Also, this is not a United States sign uh, and plus all this graffiti. I'm not going to say that the U.S. is uber-duber clean uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But this, uh, I don't think you would see this. Well, unless, I'm not even going to say where. Because I don't want to get yelled at by anybody saying where I think you would see this. So, when, I, when I'm asking you guys for photos, it's, it's photos that we can edit. And that can be really changed by a lot of people. And I think this is going to be an interesting edit. So, what would I do to this? Well, I'm, I'm taking out that yellow... It's way too yellow for me, but am I going to end up going black and white? Probably. Um, so let me just throw it into the black and white for now, and let's see what we come up with. Because maybe it won't work in black and white. I don't know, but that guy really comes out in the video down here. Um, ooh, that's interesting. You know, I played with the fill light again. I don't know, that weird old trick that I saw a long time ago that you just sit here and you pump it up and you go like this and you go like that and do the clarity and you get something like this. But this photo, there's a, there's a ton that can be done to it. I mean, I lost a lot of the detail back here in the signs. I mean, sure, you could hit recovery and bring it. Wow. You can actually hit recovery and bring quite a lot back. Hmm. That begs the question, do I want to use recovery on this? It's not a slider I use very often, but if you look down here... In this area, I don't know if this is an advertisement or graffiti, but it really, really brings it back. Um, also, this let's go through what it was shot at. One-fourth of a second, f2.8, ISO 500, 22 millimeters using a 17-50 2.8 with a Nikon D90. So this could be a 17-50 Sigma or, or I guess a Tamron, depending on which one they have. What I like about it is that this person is frozen for the most part, nice and clear, and all the other people are moving. I'd be interested to know if this is a handheld shot or not a handheld shot, plus where it's at in the world. So if any of you guys know where this is at in the world, please let me know. All right. I may end up trying two edits here. Now, this is interesting with this recovery. I don't want to go all the way with... Ooh, but I, it looks interesting. Even though it cuts down on my contrast... Even though it cuts down on the contrast, it really serves this image pretty well. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yep, that's right. Fill in a little bit more black. Boom. General sharpening. For those of you who want to know what my general sharpening is, there it is right here on the screen. And you know what? Let's let's try a second ed edit of this this week just to see if, if color would work. Boom, reset, color, here we go. Goodbye to the yellow. Mm, it's a little too green. Pump that up. Go to contrast. Go contrast. Go, go, gadget contrast. Go, 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 black levels. I don't know, I rarely do fill light with color. Because you know, it makes it really uber duper punchy. So let me just bump the contrast, do this to the clarity. Hmm, what can we do with the yellow? Do we want to take too much of it out or not? Hmm, hmm, there's the black and white, which is solid. That's nice. Look at that guy. I mean, my eye goes right to this guy right here. The conductor. Is he a conductor or is he just a guy in the train? No, he looks like a conductor. All right, then we're going to go back to the color. I don't think this lends well to HDR, but if you guys want to prove me wrong and tell me this is an HDR shot, feel free. I'm all for seeing what you guys come up with. You know what? Ooh. Do we want to play this game? Do we want to play the game and go really psycho weird with this? 
Do, should I do it? Oh, snap. Oh, 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 snap. All right, I don't want to go uber duper psycho, but I'm going to go with this. Getting close right there. So where did it start? Black and white, of course. And there, hey, it's so flat. It's so flat. By the way, the button I hit is the one right above the return button. It's a slash like this on the side. Or in this case, if it's backwards on your screen, it probably looks like this. But it's on the right hand under my delete key on the Mac. That's so I can see the before and after. This is interesting. No, I don't need recovery. It's too magenta-y. Add a slight bit of green. Do we want to add more yellow back into it? No. I want to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back. Bring that back. Pump the blacks up. E Pulling back slightly. And that is what I'm going to go with. So coming up right now on his very first raw edit as a guest is Adam Lerner from New York. I threw him this file to see what he could come up with. Uh, I'll be having guests on from time to time to see what they come up with. And then we're going to, well... We're going to come right back after his edit and see whose you like better or see what Adam was able to do and then open it up to you guys. All right, Adam, you are up. I really like this image. It's a street shot probably somewhere in Europe. Um, making that assumption, looking at this street car, seeing the graffiti that's on the car, the cobble streets, the cobble sidewalk, some street signs over here that appear to be in another language. Real compelling scene here, and you get a true sense of place, time of day, time of year, very strong. And street photography just happens to be something that I really enjoy doing, whether I'm in New York or traveling. So this is a very nice shot, a very nice example of a street shot in Europe. Uh, right off the bat, um, there's some terrific details here, some excellent leading lines. You've got the leading lines um, of the uh, train tracks over here. You've got the cables from the cable car. You've got this nice banister over here that, that kind of follows the same line as this fence and this wall over here. So real nice shot, real nice perspective. And one thing that I really enjoy especially about this image is that the photographer decided to shoot at f2.8 and by doing so he or she got real nice selective focus on the streetcar and particularly the train conductor who is appears to be looking at his log while the folks are emptying out of his car another thing that i think is really excellent about this image is that the photographer chose to shoot at a slow shutter speed and you've got the folks exiting the car and going up the stairs in blur which you know in my opinion is is really nice because your attention is drawn to the car you're drawn into the car you're drawn into the nice light hitting this conductor here and you get a sense of this particular moment in time which is really terrific um, one thing that i would probably want to do with this image at first here is maybe let's take it black and white let's see how that looks so i'm going to go into the black and white treatment right here and really nice we've got some good light very silvery but uh, i want to punch it up so i'm going to open it up with my exposure a bit here and i'm going to give it a little bit of fill light to brighten it up and that is definitely too much so why don't we try to bring it back with some blacks and a lot of what i do when i'm editing here is not necessarily scientific. Um, it's just really a lot by feel. I, I try to edit things to bring out what I feel looks the best. All right, so um, I think this image could use a little bit more contrast, so let's pump that up. And that's actually looking really nice. Um, I'm just gonna pop the highlights up just a touch right there, pop in some clarity and um, I'm really starting to like the look of this image here. Might just do um, a little bit of sharpening and see how that looks. I'm looking at the sharpening mask because I really only want to sh sharpen the edge detail here and that looks looks pretty nice. Um, let's see but you know when I'm thinking about this image and I'm going back to the original there is some really kind of nice color information in here. We've got some blues in this sign. We've got some yellows that are hiding underneath the overall yellowish tint of the actual image, which is just a matter of white balance. 
We've also got uh, some green in these trees here. So let's see what we can do with this as a color image. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset this right here. And we're gonna go back. And the very first thing we're gonna do is adjust the white balance. Uh, I'm just gonna do it by field. Um, some folks like to basically grab the little eyedropper and maybe select something. And you know, to be honest, like that's actually not bad. So I'm gonna use this as a starting point. And right away, you can see, We've got the, um, the the cobbles in the street have you know kind of a more realistic grayish tone. The tree is green. Um, the leaves in the tree, the sky has a bluish tint to it. Uh, skin tones look a lot nicer. And all I did to do that was I just selected the W um, key on the keyboard, and that just freed up the eyedropper for me to click anywhere on the image. And I picked what I considered to be what would be a neutral tone, which which was ultimately this white painted portion of the train right here. So right off the bat, without even touching exposure, without even touching the blacks, without even touching clarity, contrast, or any of those things, to me, this image has really come alive. And I think the color image, the color information is very, very strong. However, I think that at this point, the image is a little bit flat and I wanna pop it up a little bit. So very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, up the exposure just a, just a bit. Let's see. Well, that's a little bit too much, and we're just going to drop it down a little bit to there. And I don't want people to feel afraid about using sliders. I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm going to adjust this, it's going to be too much. Oh, I'm going to adjust that, it's going to be too little. I really need to kind of keep in a safe zone. A lot of what you do with images, or a lot of what I do with images, happens in the post-processing. And there's nothing wrong with experimenting. There's nothing wrong with, with messing with this stuff. So back to the exposure here, uh, let's bring in some blacks and uh, there we go. That looks a little bit nicer. I'm actually going to pop in some fill light here just to get some of those mid, mid tones going there. And I really am liking the way this looks. Um, I like the, uh, the skin tones that, that this, the conductor has right here. I like the color of the train. I like the color of the tree. I like that we still have the blue color um, in the sky from night. So a few other things that I would want to do to this image to continue to, to round it off. I'm going to just up my contrast just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more punch. I'm going to add some clarity, and that's also going to punch up some of those midtones. And you know, you can see when you really push it up there, you know what it does to some of the highlights is it kind of makes them fuzzy if you bring them too far down, and it kind of gives them too much of a halo effect when you bring them up. So, you know, you just kind of have to dial it into taste. And I don't mind that these lights are overexposed. I think that it kind of adds the effect. I like that there's some light flare coming off of the headlamp on the, the trolley right here. And I also like that by upping the exposure and upping the fill light, we were able to get some of the shadow detail back in the top of the trolley. We could even almost see, you know, some of the detail. Actually, we can see it pretty well here in the uh, window grate on this building that's adjacent to the street here. So I feel like the scene is really starting to unfold nicely. Um, I would maybe just uh, do a little bit of sharpening here. And I'm going to mask it so that I can really look and kind of fine tune the sharpening just mo mostly for edge detail. And I would say at this particular point, I'm pretty happy with the way that this image is looking. Um, I don't think I would change a whole lot about this. I think the street scene is really nice. I think that the billboard information looks great. I like that you can actually see some skin tone in the folks that are moving up and up the stairs here. You can almost even see some blue in the denim on this girl over here. But overall, as a whole, I think this is a terrific street shot and um, really nice night shot. And one of the things you know you have to think about is that this photographer put themselves right in the frame here. Uh, if you look at the way that this was shot, it was shot at uh, 22 millimeters with a 17 to 50 at 28, which basically means with a crop sensor, they were shooting approximately 35 millimeters or so, which is a really nice focal length for street photography. So whether that was intentional or not, it really works terrific. And um, this is my edit. I really like it. All right, and we're back. We have Adam here in the bottom right-hand corner. Adam, what did you think uh, of your very first raw edit? I know you've seen a whole lot of edits that we've done. Do you does it uh, was it as easy as it looked? No, it's not easy in any way whatsoever. Uh, 
it's it's it, trying to be fresh on camera is definitely a skill. It's an acquired skill. So it's easier for most people sitting at home, just sitting there downloading the raw file whenever they want and doing their own edits and not having to pretty much explain what they're doing to it. Yeah, I mean, when you're put on the spot and you're trying to, you know, talk about every little move that you're making, you're subconsciously typically doing that. You're not thinking like, oh, let me describe it in full detail. So it's it's challenging. No sure. Doubt. So let me uh, tell everybody whose edits we have. I mean, they've already seen the video. So mine, my color's on the left, my black and white's in the middle, and Adam's uh, color is on the right-hand side. What? Anything you got to say about my edits that you see mine? Yeah, I mean, I think that your edits are nice and punchy. Um, I think that you kept consistent um, on both of your edits uh, as far as how you managed your, your contrast and your blacks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that your your um, color edit's a little little greenish a on little the hue. A little green after seeing yours, yeah. Um, and I think that uh, you definitely blackened your um, black and white edit quite a bit and just lost a little bit of shadow detail that I might have liked to have seen. But um, you know, overall, they're very much in your keeping with your style, and I think they're nice and punchy. Well, I did some interesting things with the black and white that you wouldn't have seen yet. Um, I used some recovery to bring back the graffiti on the left-hand side, you know, uh, on the wall, right in the middle. I, I lost I a lot of that it. detail, so I, I used recovery, which is something I never really use in any of my own work. Uh, right. I just don't like it sometimes because it flattens the image out. But, I mean, it, it flattened here, but I really like... My eye still, in well, in all of them, except maybe in yours, is drawn right to the conductor. Because your, yours may be a little too, not, not well, it's flat. Flatter. Right. At least in my opinion, it's a little flat. But who knows? People may like that and say that mine's over the top and too punchy. I would say in comparison to yours, mine looks flatter, without a doubt. That's true. Um, I, you know, for me, I tried messing with the recovery, but what I found that what it did... Um, is that it made the skin tones look kind of funny. Yeah, mine's definitely too green. And I guess if I really was going to put a lot of time into editing this, I probably would have selectively gone in there with a, 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 a dodging tool and a burning you know, dodging tool onto, sure. the, uh, onto the, the billboards. But I like the way yours kind of pops out with more detail, for I sure. I still think I like the black and white the most. I, I, there's just something about it. It's cleaner. Like yours, your colors, it's, it looks very clear and clean. Mine looks, mm -hmm. my color looks a little bit punchy and, you know, well, it's yellow and it's green all at the same time. So it's, I don't know. We have three different edits, which, which is the great part about these raw edits. And that's why it's going to be pretty interesting to see what you guys come up with when you download, uh, this is week 23 already, of the raw edit. So you're going to, Get your chance as long as you're logged into the forum. It's really easy to sign up for the forum. You just need to use Facebook Connect, and you can get access to download the raw file and then, you know, upload it to the Facebook page, upload it to the forum so everybody can see what you did. Yeah. So any uh, any words uh, for anybody out there? Or just anything you want to add to this, Adam? Yeah, I'd just say, you know, go out there, keep shooting. Don't be afraid to... Blacken your blacks and punch up your images as you do so nicely, Jared. And uh, doing um, these videos is not as easy as it looks. Yeah, maybe we'll get some people in uh, to try. Some of the readers like like you will we'll call up some people and see what they can do with this. Nice. All right. Well, thanks so, for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome. I think you did a great job for the first time doing it. Um, cool. We'll see. Maybe we'll throw you in the mix again in the future. So. All right. What we want to see, or what I would like to see, is for you guys to still send in your raw files. Uh, I still look for a little bit of everything. Obviously, something that catches my eye, you don't know what's going to catch my eye. But I'm looking for files that are really editable in many different ways. Like that train one last week, so many people can edit that uh, and give different variations. And I think we're going to come up with different variations of this week. Who knows, maybe that HDR look could work for this. You never know. I know I say it each week, but... You guys keep throwing HDR out, and the, the ones that are done really well tend to look good. I just wish they were a little more poppy, little, had a little more contrast and depth to it, but that's that's just my feeling. So send your raw edit files, not the edits of this file, but raw edit files that you want to see me edit to fronosphoto at gmail.com. Be sure to download this particular file, raw file number 23, the raw edit of the week, 
and make sure to put it up in the forum and on Facebook, and let's see what you guys come up with. Adam, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. So that's it. Those are the three edits. Let's see what you guys come up with. I'm really interested to see what you guys send in. Jared Poland, Fro Nose, Photo.com. See ya.